Hi, Archie. Good morning. All right, let me have a sip of my coffee. Mm. Okay. So we are at an interesting place in the last chapter of this book because Jigsaw, his brothers, and his friends have played a trick on Fuzzy. Fuzzy thought he was going to arrive at 12 o'clock noon and rake the leaves for Mrs. Rigby and get the money. But Jigsaw and his friends came early in the morning and did the job for free. So when Fuzzy arrives at 12 o'clock, the job is done. There is no work for him to do, so he will not get any money. And he is angry about this. And we know that right before Mrs. Rigby came out of the house, she's in the house getting lemonade for everyone. Right before that, when it's just the kids, he's clenching his fists and his face is getting angry and he's like, he's mad. But then Mrs. Rigby walks out. Kids are oftentimes more likely to be brave or angry or threatening to other kids if there are no adults around. But when an adult shows up, maybe they will back off. So just when Buzzy is like, Mrs. Rigby walks out of the house and that's where we're picking up today. Suddenly, Mrs. Rigby appeared at the front door. She was carrying a tray. It held a pitcher of grape juice. Oh, I was wrong about the lemonade. <laughs> and a stack of paper cups. She looked up. Oh, hello, Buzzy, she said. Now, remember, she had been concerned that Buzzy might not like them raking the leaves in the morning when she made an arrangement with him for him to do it as a job at 12 o'clock noon. And the kids had not told her the truth. They had said, oh, Buzzy will just be upset that he missed doing it with us this morning. And Buzzy, he's mumbling. Mumbling is a, is a way of saying said, but it means you're not speaking very clearly. You're like, rah, 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 rah. he's like, er, uh, hi, Mrs. Rigby, Buzzy mumbled. I, Jigsaw, stepped forward. We were just telling Mrs. Rigby what a swell guy you were, I told Buzzy. It was awfully nice of you to let us do her yard for free. Ah, for free? You know, we've talked about how an author can use italics if they want us to kind of stretch the word apart say it more slowly than the other words so that it emphasizes that word. Another trick that an author can do is to put all of the letters in capital. And when they put them all in capital, they kind of want us to say them louder. So Buzzy's like, for free? Buzzy exclaimed. For free, Mila repeated. Do You see, this one has an ex, uh, it has an exclamation mark because these are capital letters and we're gonna say it louder, but it also has a question mark. So here the author is using two different pieces of punctuation, the question mark because it's a question and the exclamation mark because he's kind of yelling. And so when we do a question, we kind of go up at the end, right? So he says, for free, and then Mila is going to repeat it, but she's not asking a question, she's answering it. And so she says, for free. Now, the reason this is a comma and not a period is because it's a sentence where we are using quotation marks, here and here. And when we are showing inside the quotation marks what someone is saying, and then the name of the person talking, and then a word that is said, or that means said, then here, instead of a period, we put a comma. 
but like a period, it, she's saying it as a sentence, as a statement. So she is not doing a question. So Buzzy says, for free? And she says, for free. Now Buzzy is of course surprised, but he has to be very careful what he says in front of Mrs. Rigby. Buzzy stared at me hard. I think Buzzy has a lot of questions going on in his mind, but how can he ask his questions, right? Think about what everybody knows and what everybody's thinking about. Buzzy has known for the entire story that he is the answer to the question, who is doing all of these things, uh, making all of these mysteries that Jigsaw is investigating. Buzzy is the one who has known, I, Buzzy, I am the one who took the necklace. I am the one who made a phone call inside the same house. I am the one who wanted Jigsaw to be at the Rigby place just in time to see me inside the scarecrow costume, walking around and making it look haunted. And I am the one who has been taking down Daniel and Nick's leaf raking business signs all over town. So Buzzy knows he is the answer to that question, who is doing all of these things? And Buzzy's thinking, ha ha ha, the answer is me. I am the one doing it, but nobody knows except for my partner and girlfriend, Kayla. But he's pretty sure that nobody knows Kayla's not gonna say anything. So he thinks he's gotten away with it. Remember we use that expression, is Buzzy going to get away with this? And Buzzy's thinking, yes, I am getting away with this. No one is going to figure it out because I am so clever. I am so smart. And his whole goal was for him to do the Rigby place. He wanted to keep Daniel and Nick away from the Rigby place. He, Buzzy, wanted to be the one to get the money for raking the leaves at the Rigby place. And here we are at the end of the story, the Rigby place, and all the leaves are gone. So his whole plan didn't work. I mean, everything he did for the entire book was so that he could rake the Rigby place and now it's already done. His plan failed. He thought that he got away with all of these things that he did and that no one knows it was him and that he could do the Rigby place. But now the Rigby place is already done. So why would that happen? He's gotta be thinking, why would that happen? And he's gotta be realizing, oh, they figured out it was me. They figured out what happened. They solved the mystery, but he can't ask them if they did that because then he has to admit, oh yeah, it was me. So he knows that it was him and he realizes that they know it was him, but he can't say anything because if he does, he's admitting that yes, he was the bad guy in the story. He was the one that did all of these things. So now he knows that they know and they know that he knows they know, but no one can say that. Well, Buzzy can't say it. He would, he would have to admit that he is the one that did it. And he does not want to. He could, that would be a very brave and noble thing to do, to say, okay, fine, I did all of these things and I'm sorry, please forgive me. But Buzzy does not seem to me to be the kind of person who wants to do that. Maybe he is not brave enough. Sometimes bullies are actually not very brave people. And sometimes they are people that do not like to say, I did something wrong and I'm sorry. That would be a person who's willing to be accountable for their own choices, to take responsibility for their own choices. And that takes a brave and good person. So, so Buzzy's staring at Jigsaw. I, Jigsaw, felt Nicholas and Daniel move closer to me, side by side by side. So that is really cool of Daniel and Nick. Remember, Buzzy, uh, 
Jigsaw is only in second grade. His brothers, Daniel and Nick, are in seventh or eighth grade. So they're five or six years older than him. And they came and stood next to him. So here's Jigsaw. He's going to be very short, standing up to Buzzy, who's also five or six years older. But Jigsaw has two big brothers. And they came and they stood right next to him on both sides, kind of like guards bodyguards, you know, kind of like we are standing with Jigsaw. If you want to get to him, you have to go through us. We are his big brothers. You don't mess with him. We will protect him. We will defend him. You know, you have to mess with us if you want to mess with him. And so they're really showing strength and kindness and love for Jigsaw. And Buzzy, who it's easy for a tall, big eighth grader to intimidate or make a second grader feel scared because they are so much bigger and more powerful. But he can't do that when, he, when Nick and Daniel are standing next to him. You know, it's interesting because this whole story was really about Buzzy wanting to prevent Daniel and Nick from doing this leaf raking job at the Rigby place. That would have been a seventh or eighth grader against a seventh or eighth grader. But Buzzy did not fight fair, right? Instead of Buzzy kind of working against Daniel and Nick, he went for Jigsaw, their little brother. And he thought, oh, that's easy. That's a little kid. He will get scared easily. I can use him and kind of focus on him to get to Daniel and Nick. And that is really uh, what's a good word to describe that? That's really unkind. It's low. It's not fair. I think it makes it so that we, the reader, really cannot respect Buzzy. So when we think about that, we realize that you know, he deserves to lose the Rigby job. Well, Jigsaw is going to say something to him. Jigsaw wants him to know the mystery has been solved and you are not getting away with it. You wanted to get away with this so you could get the money from the Rigby place. Well, you are not going to get away with this because you will not get the money for the Rigby place. And so Jigsaw here says, I spoke softly so Mrs. Rigby couldn't hear. And he, so he's only talking to Buzzy. And he says, fair is fair, Buzzy, and you're foul by a mile. Okay, so he's kind of playing with language here. Foul would be something that's against the rules. Like if you're playing baseball and you hit the ball and it does not go inside the um, playing field, like if, if you think about where you're standing on home plate, and then if you think about going down to, let me see, I'll go this way, going down to the first base and going down to the third base, if you hit the ball outside of those lines, if it's out here, then that's a foul, foul ball. So you have to do it again, it doesn't count. Or if you are playing soccer and you break a rule, one of the soccer game rules, uh, I think that's called a foul, but <laughs> I might be wrong on that. But a foul, the word foul is often used with sports if you are breaking one of the rules of the game. We also use the word foul for a really bad smell. That's an adjective that describes a really bad smell. But foul is not a word with a good positive connotation. It's a word that means that's not okay. Uh, it's breaking a rule, it's not good, and it's definitely not fair, right? If you're hitting the ball and it's within the lines of the first base and the third base and it goes into the field, you know, the, the, the referee will say, referee or the umpire, the umpire will say, fair ball. Or if it goes outside the lines, they'll say foul ball. So when Jigsaw says, you are foul by a mile, by a mile just means not a little bit, but a lot. You know, he's saying, you're not being fair. You're not playing by the rules. 
what rules? Well, people have rules. There's, they're not rules that are written down so much. They're rules about um, what's a good way to treat another person, right? And so we want to treat other people like they're the same as us. We're all people, right? So no matter how we look or how old we are or the color of our skin or what country we're from or what language we speak or what we believe or, you know, no matter what the differences are, we are all people. And we want to treat other people the same way we want them to treat us, which is with respect and kindness and um, fairness. And Buzzy was really not being fair, right? He was on purpose trying to make a little girl feel sad that her necklace is missing and a boy, a little boy be scared that there's a haunted scarecrow. I mean, these are not good things. <laughs> and he says, Jigsaw also says, you, Buzzy, tried to pull a fast one with that phony scarecrow. So he's got a lot of um, expressions in here. To pull a fast one is to play a trick on someone. Phony means it was not real. That scarecrow was not really alive. And then he says, but you messed with the wrong guy. He says, you messed with the wrong guy. That's another expression that means you tried to trick me, but I'm turning it around and make, doing a trick on you. Like, so this morning, the Rigby place got raked. All the leaves got raked up and Buzzy was not expecting that. So uh, Jigsaw and his friends kind of played a trick on, on Buzzy. And so he said, now the trick's on you, right? He goes, I've turned it around. So you tried to play a trick on me. Now we are playing a trick on you. And Jigsaw sees that as fair. And then he says, it's time to hit the road. So this is another expression, which means to leave. And then Kim says, yeah, just dry up and blow away. <laughs> That's another expression that means leave. That's not a very nice expression though. You would not say that to a friend. Now, Mrs. Rigby is not hearing any of this. She's still standing there with her tray of grape juice. Buzzy glanced up at Mrs. Rigby standing by the porch. Let's take a look here at, here is Buzzy showing up on his nice Schwinn bike. And we can see Jigsaw and Mila, Daniel and Nick, and then the friends from school, and here's Kim. And you can see on his face, he looks surprised. Well, he, Buzzy, he knew he couldn't make a fuss. So to make a fuss or to make a scene means to get upset. Right, he could not do that in front of Mrs. Rigby. And also now that he realizes that they know he's the one that did all of these bad things with the haunted scarecrow and taking the necklace and that he had planned everything, he realizes that he can't really act like the person who is the victim. Oops. Buzzy glanced at the scarecrow and the long line of leaf bags that shows they have raked up all of the leaves. He muttered, this is a way of saying said, but again, you're not speaking very clearly, and sighed. Like, <sighs> Without another word, Buzzy climbed back on his bicycle and rode away. It didn't exactly break my heart to see him go. Here is that expression, break my heart. Our, our heart gets broken if we are really sad about something or really disappointed. But Jigsaw is saying, it did not break my heart to see him go. That means he was happy to see him go, right? What's the opposite of being sad? Being happy. So he was happy to see Buzzy leave. I took a long, deep slug of grape juice. Delicious, I told Mrs. Rigby. 
thanks. Oh no, Mrs. Rigby replied, thank you. Thank all of you. Please come and visit again sometime. We will, Mila said. Yeah, I agreed, especially if you've got more grape juice. Mrs. Rigby smiled happily. Now, I'm not an expert when it comes to money. Sure, we study it in school, and I know whose picture is on the $5 bill, but right then, looking at Mrs. Rigby's face, I figured that her smile was worth $100 easy. All right, I'm gonna show you a picture of the $5 bill and the $100 bill. Well, this one is the $100 bill. And this person in the middle, it says Franklin. This is Benjamin Franklin. So Benjamin Franklin, he was one of the people who signed the Declaration of Independence, which is a famous document for the United States of America. It was the document that said to England, we are now, a, we are now our own country. So the United States is being born. We are creating a new country. And they also wrote the constitution, which is this is everything that we believe in. This is everything that our country believes in. And he also signed that. He's also famous as an inventor. Uh, I think he invented electricity. Well, you can't really say someone invented electricity, but he discovered electricity. So that's the $100 bill. And you can see here is a $100 bill where it looks a little bit different. Um, you can see here his face is bigger and here, look, he's, he, you can see a, a bigger part of his body here. Here it's a close up of his face. And then here you can see in the corners that the, where they have, how they have the 100, everything looks a little bit different. So you can kind of compare those. This here, the one on the bottom, is how the $100 bills looked back when I was a kid. And then they changed them. Um, I don't see a date. This one was from 1974. And this one was from 2006. So sometime between 1974 and 2006, they changed the way that they look. The $5 bill, I guess I just have one. I can't quite read the date here. I don't know if that says 2003. Wait, it's $5. It's $5. <laughs> and this is Abraham Lincoln. So Abraham Lincoln was a president of the United States. He was the president during the time of America's civil war. A civil war is when there is a war right inside the same country between two different groups of people that are in the same country and they're fighting against each other. And the, Amer and the American civil war was about the issue of slavery. And so President Lincoln, he did not want there to be any more slavery. Slavery is when a person could buy another person and say, I own you, I paid for you. And so you do not have the same rights as a human being and you need to do whatever I say and I don't even have to pay you money to do it. So slavery is not good. And Abraham Lincoln was the president and said, we do not want any more slavery in this country. It ended up being kind of the North versus the South and it lasted a long time. A lot of people died. It is a part of American history that is very sad and people feel very badly about it. And President Lincoln was, you know, on the side of the North, he's saying, we do not want any more slavery in America. But how many money is, <clears throat> how many money is Washington on? Oh, George Washington? <laughs> yeah. Oh, George Washington is on one dollar bill. Let me pull that up and show you. So here's the one dollar bill, and this has, um, this says Washington, okay, right here. We can see Washington. This is George Washington. He was the first president of the United States. And 
the the one dollar bill looks a little bit different today. Uh, this I think this is two thousand three though, so it wasn't that long ago. And this is the back side. So this is the front side, and this is the back side. And so you can, it's very interesting to look at the different parts here. Um, a lot of people like to, you know, look at this part and wonder what it means. Um, you know, what does this pyramid mean and this eye and, you know, over here is, if this, these are not English words, I think these are Latin. Uh, this says of the United States, and there's the eagle. Um, here it says the United States of America, in God we trust, one dollar. So that's the one dollar. Here is the front and back side of the Taiwan money that is 10 NT. If you have three of these, that is 30 NT. And 30 NT is worth more than one American dollar. Almost the same. So we could probably think of three of these as equal to one American dollar. So if you buy a T that is six of these or 60 NT, that is about two American dollars. All right, so let's move the money over here. And so I would say most American kids never see a $100 bill. I don't think I ever saw a $100 bill when I was a kid. And if you're going to do a job of raking leaves, maybe you will get $20 US dollars. So maybe that would be four, maybe that would be four of these because this is $5 and four times five is 20. So he says, I know whose picture is on the $5 bill. That's Abraham Lincoln. But when he's looking at Mrs. Rigby's face, he's thinking that her smile was worth $100 easy. What do you think that means when he says her smile was worth a hundred dollars easy? Adding easy means at least. Her smile was worth at least a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars was no problem. A person could rake the leaves for Mrs. Rigby and she's not happy and she gives you twenty dollars or five dollars and you have five dollars. But if you rake the leaves for Mrs. Rigby and she's smiling, he thought that that smile and her joy and her happiness and seeing her so happy was better than having $100. He would rather have no money and see her happy than to have $5 and see her sad. So this is showing that Jigsaw is a really kind person. He really cares about people. And he, he also cares about fairness, right? He cared about Kim and how she lost her necklace and he wanted to solve that mystery and help her. So he solves mysteries partly because he's good at it and partly because I think he cares about people and he wants to help them. He wants to use his own gifts, being very smart, being a very smart person, to help other people solve their problems. Yes, he does get a dollar a day, which is actually not very much, right? We just saw one dollar. That's not too much. That's just 30 NT, right? Just three of these for all of his work. But right now they worked all morning and they did not get paid any money. And he's happy because Mrs. Rigby is smiling. And when he sees her smile, that is worth more to him than any money in the world. He would rather see her smile than get paid money.
and that shows us what a kind person he is. There is one more page that I don't have on here, and it's just this little bit right here, so I'm just going to read it. It says, some days being a detective is just about the best job you can get. The pay may not be great, but the smiles, well, the smiles are priceless and the grape juice is free. That's the end. He says the smiles are priceless. Let's take a look at that word. Price means how much does something cost? And less is a suffix that we can put at the end of the word. And it means there is none. Okay, it means without, without price. So that means you cannot put a price on a smile. You cannot say, oh, that person's smile is worth $5 or worth $100 or worth 10 NT. A smile, there is no price for it. He thinks a smile is worth more than any amount of money in the world. It makes him really happy to see a smile on someone else's face. And if the work he does as a detective puts a smile on someone's face, that makes him so happy. He, he does not even need money for that. He's just glad to see that he was able to help someone be happy. That's the end of our book. But before we say goodbye, I have gone through the book and I have found all of the clues from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. And I want us to, to, to just zip through the whole book, beginning to end, and take a look at these clues. Most people that read this book, they don't realize when they're reading it that it's about Daniel and Nick's leaf raking business and how Buzzy is not happy about it and how Buzzy wants to take away their business and Buzzy wants to be the only one making money raking leaves. Most people reading this book think that it's just about the case of finding Kim's missing necklace. And then they think, oh, okay, there's another mystery about this haunted scarecrow, but they don't see that the missing necklace and the haunted scarecrow go together. And they don't see that the whole big picture from beginning to middle to end is about Daniel and Nick's leaf raking business. But if we go back to the beginning and we start looking for those clues, knowing what we know now, we can see how the author has kind of made a, you know, connect the dots from beginning to end of how this all has to do with the leaf raking business. So back in the beginning, we can see that Daniel says to, Daniel says to their dad, me and Nick are starting a leaf raking business. And Nick says, we put up flyers. And the dad says, well, you've got competition. Buzzy Lennon has most of the neighborhood all signed up. And Daniel says, Buzzy's a ripoff artist. And then he says, he, hurt, he charged old Mrs. Rigby $100 last year to rake her leaves. And then as Jigsaw and Mila were walking over to Kim's house for the very first time to find out about the case that Kim wants to hire them to do, Jigsaw says, that's the third one so far. Those are the flyers, the posters that are advertising Nick and Daniel's leaf raking business. He says, my brothers really plastered the neighborhood they put that sign up all over the neighborhood so all of the neighbors could see that Nick and Daniel are available to rake their leaves. And then Mila, something caught her attention and she was at the Rigby place and she was noticing, and she was noticing the Rigby place and really thinking about that. And the Rigby place becomes a very important place in the story. And so here we're seeing what it looks like, how it 
really is in bad shape. And she thinks it looks kind of spooky, right? She says it was badly in need of repairs, paint peeled, shutters banged, the lawn was thick with leaves, so it needed someone to rake the leaves, bare branches on the trees. And she said, boy, that's kind of spooky. So it brings our attention to the Rigby place. And then Kim says, my sister Kayla suggested I call you. And this is where Jigsaw chewed on that fact, found it like cafeteria food, hard to swallow because Kayla was in the middle school, just like his brother, Daniel. So she was much older, maybe six years older. Why would she tell Kim to call Jigsaw to be the one and solve the mystery. That made no sense to him at all. And then here they are in Kim's room when there was a sudden rap on the door and a female voice, this is going to be Kayla, female means a girl's voice, this is Kayla, said, Kimmy, telephone. And so they go into the kitchen <clears throat> they wanted to know who was it on the phone. And Kayla said, he didn't say, so we know it's a boy. And here in the kitchen is when Jigsaw looks outside the kitchen window and sees the white mountain bike with red front forks locked beside an apple tree. It was a Schwinn Moab 3. So we have a lot of details about this bike that is going to be Fuzzy's bike. And then after Kim got off the phone, she said, he hung up, he, so we know it's a boy. We already knew that from what Kayla said. But then Mila says, I heard a giggle in the background, a girl. So now we know there's a partner. Actually, now we know that they were upstairs in the father's office. And then as Jigsaw was walking over to the Rigby place to the drop off, he noticed that someone had ripped down his brother's leaf raking signs. It brings our attention back to Daniel and Nick's leaf raking business. And then after he got all spooked by the scarecrow and he ran home and he goes into Daniel and Nick's bedroom, Daniel was studying his bank book. Why? Because He's working on their leaf raking business and he's looking to see how much money are they making. This is another reminder to us of their leaf raking business. And then here in Nick and Daniel's bedroom, Jigsaw says, don't go near the Rigby place, promise me, it's too dangerous. And then Daniel says, fine. He says, old Mrs. Rigby pays top dollar. We were hoping to get her business. This is another reminder to us about Nick and Daniel's leaf raking business and how this is, the story is really centering on the Rigby place and how people want that job to make that money. So they cross the Rigby place off the list and then they remind us of Buzzy Lennon. They say there are other houses to steal from Buzzy Lennon. And here, when they say to steal, that means, you know, they're competing for the business. So a neighbor, a person who lives in the neighborhood can either choose Buzzy to rake their leaves or Daniel and Nick. And Daniel and Nick want to win and Buzzy wants to win, but only one of them will get to rake the leaves. And here is when Jigsaw thinks, does Buzzy know about your leaf raking business? And Daniel says, it's not a secret. Our posters are all over town. And then Jigsaw starts to kind of put the clues together, right? He says, I doubt Buzzy is happy about it. Your posters aren't all over town, not anymore. Somebody's been ripping them down. But this is funny. He says, I doubt it was a scarecrow, but now we know it kind of was the scarecrow because the person ripping down the signs and the scarecrow were the same person. That was Buzzy. 
And then here, the next day at school, Mila was treating Jigsaw as a witness. And she wanted to ask him about the scarecrow that he saw. And she said, do you remember any details? And he says, well, flannel shirt, blue jeans, heavy black shoes. And then they decide to go there after school. And after school, when Jigsaw and Mila are getting ready to go, this is when Jigsaw got his lucky break. And he said, how did you get home yesterday, Mila? And she said, well, Kayla's boyfriend gave me a ride on his mountain bike. She remembered how he called the bus, the big yellow Twinkie. Right, and so they keep talking about the big yellow Twinkie. And then Mila says, you should have seen his bike, the Schwinn Moab 3, 24 speeds, crow moly frame, front suspension. She remembers a lot of details about that bike because it was really cool and it sounded familiar. And then he remembered that he had seen it in Kim Lewis's backyard. He remembered it was white frame with red forks. And then they keep talking and Mila remembers that his name was Buzzy. Right, because Jigsaw says, does he have a name? And Mila remembers that it's Buzzy. And so then we talk about the connect the dots and Jigsaw puts all the dots together and he comes up with Buzzy Lennon. A picture was coming into focus. He draws a line from Kayla Lewis to Buzzy Lennon. Right, Kim had said it was a boy's voice on the phone. So that would be Buzzy. And then they think about, well, but who was the girl giggling in the background? Maybe that was Kayla. But then they have the question, how could Kayla have been with Buzzy since she was the one that answered the phone? How could they have been in the house calling another number in the house? They haven't figured that out, but they're gonna figure that out soon. And then we notice they go back to the leaf raking business. And they notice that all of Daniel and Nick's signs have been torn down. So the author brings our attention back again to that leaf raking business um, idea. And then Mila gets the idea to look in the back of the shirt on the scarecrow for the name. And so they're going to, remember they see the, the Eddie Bauer label and then they look for the other name and it says Buzzy Lennon. So now they know who, they know the answer to the question who, but they have to prove it. And so here they start telling Kim, they go to Kim's house and they start explaining to her how this all worked and how Buzzy did that. And they explain that, you know, number one, their first clue was that Kayla wanted Kim to call a jigsaw. And they said, that never made sense. Why in the world would Kayla in middle school want you to call Jigsaw a second grader to do, to work on the mystery, right? So she says, first, your necklace turns up missing. You don't know what to do, but your sister Kayla does because she is in on it. She is part of the plan. And then he says, came the phone call. They wanted me to make the drop off. They wanted me outside in the dark at the Rigby place. So they're really seeing how this is starting to focus on Jigsaw, right? Kayla wanted Jigsaw to be the one working on the mystery. It was Kayla and Buzzy's idea for Kim to call Jigsaw. And then after the phone call, they wanted Jigsaw to be the one to go to the drop off and pay the money for the necklace. So everything was about Jigsaw, right? Kayla said, call Jigsaw to solve this mystery. Buzzy on the phone said, get Jigsaw to go to the Rigby place. And why did they want that? Why did Buzzy and Kayla want that? Because they knew, Buzzy knew that Jigsaw would get spooked and he knew I'd tell my brothers Daniel and Nick. Why? because it was the leaf raking trade, right? They 
Daniel and Nick wanted to take some of Buzzy Lennon's business. They wanted the Rigby place. Well, Buzzy was trying to make sure that he got to do the Rigby place. So he was here the day you called, noticed his bike. Okay, so here's where Mila takes over and starts explaining and saying, there was no haunted scarecrow. It was Buzzy Lennon dressed up like one. And then they came, the final, uh, the final thing they had to figure out was that phone call. And they figured out, well, your father has a home office. And so Kayla could have called here from inside her own house. And when they heard the, the steps, when they heard the footsteps clomping up the stairs, that was uh, Kayla running up the stairs to join Buzzy in the father's office. So that is a look through the story at how the author kind of left us a trail of clues and all of those clues kind of reminded us of Daniel and Nick's leaf raking business and how they were in competition with Buzzy. And so Buzzy is the answer to the question, who took the necklace? Who was the haunted scarecrow? Who was taking down all of the leaf raking signs that belonged to Daniel and Nick? So Jigsaw and Mila did a very good job, I think, of being a detect of being detectives, and they solved several mysteries. There were several mysteries that needed to be solved. This was a really fun book. Did you enjoy it? I don't know if you can see. This is when we say, so long. Chair chip. All right, bye-bye, Archie. Bye. -bye,